I should have gotten to know some of these girls, though. That was... Because I was on my villain shit, so I didn't give a fuck. But, like, secretly, I still kind of cared. I, like, I still wanted, like, genuine human connection. But I guess that was just the villain deep down, you know, telling me what to do. Like, there was this one girl who I did talk about, I think, named Taylor Miller. And she was in my eighth grade science class with Mr. Barnes. She sat directly in front of me for, like, the last three weeks of class. Not the last three weeks. The last three weeks before things, you know, get super chaotic and everyone sits wherever they want because it's like the last two weeks of class. But actually, this was like the last three weeks of like, um, like middle school as a whole. But yeah, we talked a lot during that time about like TV shows on Netflix and like conspiracy theories and outer space and shit like that and told, told a bunch of stories to each other. And I, like, I was like, damn, we're like, we have a lot to talk about. We got good chemistry when we talk. Not any romantic chemistry, but we could totally be good friends. And I, like the moment high school started, we didn't have any classes together. And after like two years of not even, not having any class together, we'd see each other and we'd be in classes and things like that. But we would just never talk to each other. And it kind of like, I kind of think to myself like, damn, I fucked up. I should have continued to talk to her, right? I should have talked to her throughout high school. Because we, I knew we would have hit it off. I knew it would... It would have taken 30 seconds for us to go back to, right back to where we were. I don't have any regrets. Um, all of my regrets are like super minor, but that was one of those minor ones. I doubt she even remembers me though, but it's not even like a regret. It's like, I, I just feel, I just feel a little bad. Like I could have given her more of my friendship. I could have told her more stories, but I don't regret it. It's who I am. It's what I did. It's what I learned from. What the fuck was I supposed to do? And yeah, just like in the Aluma story, um, just like in high school, I would spend a lot of my time having people like, basically, it was a fucking pacifier for me. Like, it was like jangling keys in front of a baby. It was my way of distracting myself, where I would just get people to tell me stories. And it was mutually beneficial. Like, they wanted to tell the stories, and I wanted to listen. And this is a cool little life hack. I've talked about this before. And I'll leave those in the description. I'll leave I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Let me let me make a note of that. Um it, Yeah, it's in it's in the description. It's gonna be titled I just wanna hear stories. That's really all I wanted to do. And it, you can do this yourself. And it's, I, I think it's a great strategy to, to develop character and learn a lot about the world and learn a lot about other people and um, have a lot of fun. Have something to do with your time and, you know, go on some adventures. And uh, the, the opportunities will, will, will blossom for you if you take this little strategy. It's unlimited stories. It's unlimited um, um things to distract yourself with, you know, when you, when you don't have access to your phone and the way you do it is just, you hear people's stories and you don't ever ask yes or no questions. It's the fatal flaw of conversation. It's like, um, let's say you're having like a very like surface level, like, uh, you know, about music or whatever, right? You're just starting and you want to get deeper and deeper. You don't ask like, uh, do you like rap? Cause that's a yes or no. You ask what's your favorite genre of music? And then you only Continue with, and I know this is difficult and you have to get used to it, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. You only say other questions that you can build off of, but that always uh, lead to like, you, you always keep thinking about what questions you can ask after that. So, oh, what genre do you like, but you don't tell people you like? What's a guilty pleasure genre, you know? And have a plan, have a, have a flow chart in your head. Like be thinking 10 steps ahead. And it isn't, it isn't super hard. Like if they're good talkers and they're, you know, genuinely passionate about what they're talking about and you're just listening, it'll happen naturally. I know like you might be thinking, oh, this is so difficult. Think 10 steps ahead. No way. Like that's so nobody, I'm not a fucking genius and I'm not either. Like I'm not saying, but when you're having conversations with people, you'll notice this happens naturally. You'll notice you think 10 steps ahead and, um, but the problem is, is that like, if you, when you're having conversations with people and you're noticing all the things that you're thinking about that you could ask them, all the time people go, 
man, I forgot what I was going to ask. I had a really good question. Or they'll go, ooh, that's an interesting thought. And they won't say any of that because they're too busy trying to say their own thoughts into the other person's head. And they have their own things to say. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just listen. And instead of thinking to yourself, man, what can I, what information can I give? What kind of stories can I tell? Focus entirely on remembering the moments where you go like, ooh, that's interesting. I want to know more about that and stuff like that, you know? And so you you continue to build off of it and uh, uh, think as many steps ahead as you can and slowly you'll get you'll get better and better at it. Especially if they're if they're like not only if they're genuinely interested in what they're talking about, but if they're good at talking, if they're like charismatic with it. But I did this and I I've met a lot of really good talkers and it made me a lot better at talking as well. Uh, but really this wasn't, I didn't do this for any practical reason. I'm just giving justifications for why this is useful or, uh, beneficial or for, for why people can understand. Cause I do kind of feel guilty about this. It, I feel like it's kind of manipulation in a way. I, not by the way I'm wording it, but the way I did it, my execution of it was kind of manipulative. I would just use people for their stories. It was my fix it was my drug um and yeah i would get really cool with a lot of people but sometimes they would get cool with me and i didn't give a fuck about them i would just use them for the stories the moment i milked them for the stories i was done with them i was still on my villain arc uh, and and i i feel guilty about this because it was kind of a lie for my personality because i was on my villain arc but i acted so nice and sim and like empathetic and understanding and all this shit and you know what nowadays if i hear people's stories like that i genuinely will be but back then i was just good at pretending and so it might have resulted in a positive thing overall uh in both sides uh, like regardless but either way it was it wasn't genuine it wasn't genuine i did it because i wanted i did it for selfish reasons and um yeah, sometimes, uh, maybe I, I'm not gonna say any names, but like these, especially these girls, cause girls open up easy. Um, they tell me things like, okay, like I'm not a fucking therapist, dude. I can't help them. And, and this is the part where I really, I shouldn't have done this cause I continued to press on and be like, tell me more, tell me more. Um, even though a part of me knew I, I, I can't help them. And them telling me, it, it might uh, alleviate some of the um, weight, that, that burden of just carrying the information in their head, but it might have unintended consequences. They might regret it. They might go, wait, I shouldn't have told this person, even if they're not going to tell anyone, I shouldn't have done that. They, who knows what could happen? I don't know. I was the fucking, I'm in middle school. Like, what the fuck am I going to, I never got trained in any of this shit. I didn't know any, like, psychology or any of that shit. I didn't, I wasn't trying to be the therapist. I just wanted to hear stories. And there was this one time, actually, it wasn't even middle school. It literally wasn't, it was fifth grade. This was elementary school. It was the last year of elementary school. Miss Runyon's class, before Miss Elton got married and became Miss Runyon, but um, this was while she was still Miss Elton, I believe. This girl told me, I'm not going to say her name. And uh, Actually, I'm not going to say her name because I don't remember her name. But she told me that her dad was beating her mom in fifth grade. Dog, that's, we were, uh, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven. We were like 10 or 11 years old. And it's like, bro, let's say I'm 11 years old. You think I would know how to handle that shit? And she, I can't blame her for telling me that. How would she, there's no way I would know how to handle that. And there's no way she would even know that I would not know how to handle that. She's also 11. But it's like, man, I remember in the moment thinking to myself, like, I would never say this to anyone. Like, especially my age. What made her think that I was emotionally equipped to help her? Let alone hear shit like that, you know? Like, go tell the counselor some shit. But then again, she probably, it probably never, the thought never crossed her mind that I would 
I, I could help her or I would do anything to help her. She probably just wanted to get it off her chest. Maybe, maybe she, maybe she didn't think that deep into it. Maybe she was just saying it for whatever urge she was saying it for. And, um, I don't know enough about her to make any judgments. And uh, things got really awkward after that though. That's why I'm iffy about this because it didn't make us closer. It didn't, um, it didn't make her more open around me. I feel like she regretted saying it. 